So now here uh, we are having uh, a workshop on neutron stars where uh, people who are working on neutron stars or related areas uh, all over India have uh, come and uh, we are uh, uh, looking at aspects uh, that the community works in. Now neutron stars uh, provide some of the most extreme uh, laboratories in the whole of the universe is because uh, it weighs something like one and a half to two times uh, our own sun uh, well as uh, it is squeezed at the hands of gravity uh, to about 10 kilometers radius which means that uh, it behaves like a single nucleus which has uh, something like 10 power 39 uh, protons and neutrons and has an average density which is equal to the nuclear density. Now in terrestrial laboratories, uh, the only way we can explore such systems is to go to large colliders, large particle colliders, where you can um, look at systems uh, which have nuclear densities, but the number of particles would be at most uh, about a few hundred. Uh, and obviously to extrapolate the physics uh, uh, obtained from there to systems like neutron star, which has so many neutrons and uh, protons, uh, it's really not possible. So one really has to go to the uh, neutrons, real neutron star and try to uh, figure out what kind of physical uh, laws are applicable there. The neutron stars are, this is a fascinating field because it is the highest, most dense material concentration that you will ever find in the universe. Any denser, then we go into a black hole. And at this high density, we are probing interaction of material at very, very short distances. And uh, uh, this is something that we cannot do in the lab. Now, because of this huge density, neutron stars can also support magnetic fields, uh, which are the largest in the entire universe they can have magnetic fields as large as uh, 10 power 15 gauss and because of this extremely strong magnetic field uh, what happens is uh, neutron stars are also rotating very fast because they are very small in size they rotate very fast they have a strong magnetic field it's like a, a bar magnet rotating at a very high speed and they give off electromagnetic energy which uh, is detected on earth like small electromagnetic uh, pulses and that's why these uh, uh, objects are also known as pulsars because that's how they were uh, detected for the first time and uh, still now majority of the neutron stars detected are detected as uh, radio pulsars they, uh, they uh, are visible in the radio range So supernovae are cosmic experiments They are stars that have reached the end of their they're so massive that instead of just quietly fizzling away into a white dwarf, they actually explode. And these explosions are so bright that they are brighter than the entire galaxy for the brief period of time in which they are visible. They're absolutely interesting explosions. Think of it. This event outshines a billion suns and is visible mainly for a period of a year. And even more fascinating, there is a class of supernovae which we call core collapse supernovae. When the center of the star reaches such extraordinarily high densities, it ends up becoming a neutron star. What is it that leads to the formation of this neutron star? Why do some stars explode? Why do some stars end their lives as white dwarfs? Why do some stars throw out all their overlying matter and end up collapsing and converting themselves into these super dense little objects and some of which turn into black holes. We like to understand what happens just before the star undergoes collapse. We want to understand why some stars will undergo collapse and explode and why some will not. We want to know what are the kind of materials that are formed in the core of the star as it is undergoing collapse. This is the only place where you can end up testing super dense, super compact matter under gravitational influence. In radio astronomy also, uh, we have reached the stage where 
large national facilities such as the giant meter wave radio telescope that uh, we operate in India are now no longer sufficient to, to probe the universe at the depths that we would like to. And in radio astronomy, the next big effort is the Square Kilometer Array uh, called SKA, which is an international collaboration to build the next generation radio telescope, at least 30 to 50 times more sensitive than the best existing radio astronomy facility that we have today. This is a large and very challenging effort. It requires people and organizations from different countries to come together and work in a collaborative manner. And it also requires uh, the different member countries to build up uh, the required base of users who can exploit the facility. And this is an activity that we are now beginning to engage in India. So we have joined the Square Kilometer Array project uh, as a regular member and we are contributing towards the technical design of the telescope. We have set up science working groups within the country uh, to concentrate on specific topics in astronomy which would be relevant to the SKA and uh, there, are, there are six of these working groups of which the working group on pulsars and neutron stars is right now having a meeting in Pune to see what is the kind of science that we could best do with the SKA and how we can work towards preparing ourselves for that. In the coming decade, we are going to have interesting new uh, instruments to measure some important properties of neutron stars. In particular, even how heavy a neutron star is and how big it is in size. These two together can tell us what is there inside the neutron star. And this is a question which we have been trying to grapple with for the last 30 years and we have still not uh, come to a conclusion. If we can figure out what is inside the neutron star, we will be able to tell how protons and neutrons behave at very high density. What is the force between them when you bring them very, very close together? And if you bring them very, very close together, do they remain protons or neutrons? Do they dissolve into some other kind of super material, maybe quarks, maybe some other new particles are created? We just don't know this. We just don't know this today from laboratory. And neutron stars and measurements of neutron stars with these new instruments is going to really open up this field. And so it's an exciting time to get into the neutron star. Radio observations with upcoming telescopes like SKA, X-ray observatories like Athena, and uh, proposed observatory like Loft, and doing uh, other space telescopes like James Webb Space Telescope. All of these new instruments which are going to come in the next 10, 20 years is going to really make a big difference in the field. So it's a good time. So it's, it's exciting that we are uh, having these instruments and the amount of data that these instruments would uh, produce would uh, happily uh, keep uh, maybe you know two generations of uh, scientists uh, totally occupied. Uh, and uh, this data really require a huge number of uh, fine scientists uh, to extract uh, the physics out of them. So uh, it will be an exciting time for the younger people to join uh, astrophysics uh, at this time or in particular uh, working on neutron stars as their career.